Hi there, glad to see you again. In this section, we're going to focus on building the front end. In this section, we're going to create bare bones web template to fetch images, and then we'll add some basic styling in order to show them as thumbnails and render them more nicely. In this specific video, we're going to focus on building the web template to fetch images. First, we'll fetch the page of images from our service. Then we're going to add a default home route to serve up that page. And then finally, we're going to create a time leaf template to display a page of images. Now in the previous section, we built up a service to manage images. To find two things for our front end, we need to fetch a page of images. And to do that, we're going to use our repository's built-in pageable support. So let's open up the image service that we've already done a bit of work in. In this case, we want to retrieve a page of data. Rather, in this case, to be specific, a page of images. Now there's a query type called a pageable that we'll use here as our input criteria. You'll notice that the repository comes with a find all pageable option. Now we'll see exactly how to submit these pageable options a little further on in this video. The next step is let's go into the home controller. Now so far we've built up a RESTful front end, but we need to define basically a default route. We'll call this our index method, but in this case, we're going to make it add a few tweaks to it on the inputs. In this case, we're going to take two input arguments, a model object and a pageable object. These are amongst the several options you can request for with Spring MVC. The model gives us the means to return a domain object to be rendered in the view itself. What we're going to do is we're going to actually first use our service to grab the page of data. Find page. And here we're going to pass in the pageable inputs coming from the web page. We'll use it to build up our model object. And then we're going to finally return the name of the template we want to render. And you'll notice that for this route here, compared to the other ones, there's no at response body annotation. That's because we're not returning back a RESTful API. Instead, we're trying to return back a view that we want to render with related data to populate it. And to do that, let's go into the final step here in this video, and let's build an HTML5 time leaf template. To do that, we're going to go down into the templates folder and create new, a new HTML file. And we're going to call this toy app that we're building. We call it Springagram, kind of like Instagram, just for fun here. Now one thing that is very important to realize about Timeleaf is that it is a DOM-based parser. And what this means is, is that all the HTML tags, even though they may be legal in HTML, some, some of them don't require closing tags. To be a DOM-based solution, they do need to have closing tags. So for instance, the meta tag that gets handed out of the box here needs to have a closing tag, or the uh, Timeleaf engine is going to throw an error. But one of the benefits here about Timeleaf is that it's HTML compliant. This means you can open up your template in your browser and you won't see corrupted non-HTML stuff. One thing we're going to add at the top here is the TH namespace. Okay, that's a good enough uh, header. Let's put in a little bit of content here. Uh, let's create a little page header. Now with Timeleaf, basically just about any HTML element that you create, you can go step in and put templated code if you use the, this th prefix that we defined up here, or the namespace, if you will. In this case, we're setting the text for the h3 element here with this string. And in this case, we use a Timeleaf expression. This lets us tap the model object that's being passed in and perform operations. And in this case, we're actually taking this and concatenating it with some other data. So we're going to look up the current page number, which is zero-based, uh, reset it to be one-based for display, and then we're also going to look up the total number of pages. Now let's build a table object. We'll add some headers. Actually, for headers, this is the wrong type. We need to use th for headers. Now let's work on the body of the table. Now what we're going to do is actually create several rows, and in this case we're going to use time leafs for each construct, which again we use the same th prefix, namespacing prefix, and we use the each tag. 
Here we're going to define a looping expression. So we're going to each, we're basically going to iterate over the page's content, which will give us an array of images. And this will let us reference each one with a single image variable. Now let's build that up. We're going to plug in the text value. In this case, we'll fetch the image's ID value. And let's go fetch the image's name. Now finally, we need to include the image itself, otherwise it's not much use. In this case, the key component for an image element is the source tag. So if you haven't guessed it yet, to put in a programmatic version, we use th colon source instead of just plain old source. You know, we'll fill it out, but don't forget image tags in HTML don't require a close tag, but when used timely, you do need to make it a closing tag. Now to make a link, we're going to use the at annotation, and this is all content you can find if you go go read uh, Timely's reference documentation. So here we're building up a link by using the at annotation. This lets us use a relative link, and Timely will generate a full URL for us. To do that, we need to be sure to have the corresponding closing tag here. So we have an opening and a closing tag here, and then we're going to concatenate together several strings. So first, we're going to take slash images need to make sure we have this properly lined up here. Uh, we'll have the image name and then we're going to have the slash raw to match our uh, endpoint uh, controller. Now with that in place we should have enough to actually run it and check it out. Now if you'll remember when we launch stuff with Spring Boot it's going to fire up a web container for us automatically and in this case it's going to auto configure both the time leaf engine and a corresponding view resolver. So it's going to know to look into this templates folder over here to find the index page. Now let's flip over to our browser and take a peek. Okay, scratch that, back up, reset. Okay. Now with it fired up, let's switch over to the browser and take a look at things. Now here we can see we have these three images here. And if you'll remember, this was part of our preloaded data, but that wasn't real image data. In fact, we don't have any real images in here yet. It's just some sample data. Why don't we go create some real images, a real image upload, using the curl command we learned in the previous volume. So over here in the terminal, we can type uh, what you may remember is a command to post a new file. All right, this was successfully created. Now we should be able to switch back to the browser and refresh the page. There we go. Now we can see item four right here in its table. And it's showing it in its normal format. In the next video, we'll see how to style this and make this look a little nicer. Now we spent this effort in order to use paging. Let's see if we can make use of it. The pageable inputs accept a couple parameters, one being the size parameter. Here we can change it and define the page as having a size of one per page. In this case, it's only showing us the first page here by default. But if we want to navigate to a different page, we can type in page page equal three. In this case, it's going to take us to, remember, it's a zero-based paging solution here. So if you take page three, our little criteria up here will bump it up and show us we're looking at page four or four. In this case, we're just seeing the one image. Paging is definitely something to think about if you're actually going to have a large volume of data for your for your users. So it, it pays to invest in the strategy up front so you don't have to go back and overhaul a lot of things. Now it's not real fancy and all but basically we have a good operational front end here. It's a it's a little bit crude but we'll be able to work and refine this and give it some more functionality throughout the rest of this course. Now in this video we built up a web front end and we served up a page of image data. We uploaded a new image and were able to pick the exact page of data we wanted to see.